Hi guys, so uh, welcome back to Snakes and Adders. This is a follow-up, we'll do it as a uh, reptile advice, although it's not really advice, it's more me answering a question that I was asked, which was why I didn't feel that halogens uh, should be used in place of ceramics, which I stated in the False Water Cobra video. Um, I need to frame this properly. So, uh, I haven't got any notes or anything, so I'm just sort of ad-libbing and thinking of a response as I go. To frame this properly, th there's a load of research going on, for, for those that don't know, with uh, Francis Brains and, and uh, Roman Murren, who are doing invaluable work, and they're doing this peer-reviewed process for videos. And the gentleman who, who's asked me to do the um, this video, this response... Uh, runs a channel called uh, Reptiles and Research, uh, which is very much about pushing uh, the latest uh, thoughts, understandings, data back studies regarding reptiles. None of what they're doing I do value, none of what they're doing I uh, necessarily challenge. I just don't necessarily know if it's um, applicable to the layman. That's, that's my issue. Um, I come at all of the videos and, and, and the way that we go about setting them up or advise for husbandry is based upon uh, the framework of me selling the animal or me and Paul selling the animal, at which point uh, we need to think about how we would sell that and if the uninitiated came in, how easy that would be to prescribe and make sense of it. Uh, Roman predominantly does a lot of the testing on uh, crotophyted uh, lizards, so uh, the collared lizards, which are desert, uh, big en impressive enclosures, uh, a mixture of, I believe, mercury vapor bulbs, I think they might have even got halide bulbs, then just LEDs emitting a bright 65k light, um, 65k tubes, and then UVB enriched tubes as well. And they cycle on and off throughout certain parts of the day and it's to offer the animal multiple choices and basking areas uh, and you know that's that's great uh, and there's halogen spots as well so there's heated stuff whatever and they're used on dimmers rather than dimmer stats as far as I'm aware which again isn't something that I necessarily agree with but you know Roman's been doing it long enough for me to not necessarily tell him how to do it what I've got to be able to do is take what they're doing and be able to disseminate that to a beginner or intermediate keeper and have it make sense and uh, I think that it's a risk to be able to ask people to set up a vivarium without a thermostat and we need to have control. The animals have circadian rhythms. We've established that the green and red lights on the spot lamps they potentially can see, this could potentially cause them stress and would affect their uh, quality of life. So. The research is people are talking about using halogen bulbs. Uh, it's a lovely good light. It's uh, nice and bright. Uh, they can thermoregulate and they can use it also to photoregulate. And then uh, they, in most cases, if not all cases, I believe they should be on a thermostat. This is all well and good. And if we're talking about desert biome animals, I don't necessarily challenge any of it. I go along with it. I wouldn't have an issue because it can all get turned off at night. And it can cool right down because of the attrition to the daytime highs. Where we have a slightly more complex issue is if we're dealing with things that are tropical or subtropical who don't necessarily have that rate of attrition at night and being able to provide the heat. Now, the counterpoint to that is that some people might say, well, you know, you could have a heat pad running on a separate thermostat. Well, exactly, you could. And then that means a second stat and it means a second rig and a second form of control. And this quickly gets out of the grasp of the layman. Where it's like, oh, well, you know, you don't just need one, you need two or even three controllers. Then you don't just need one or two tube starters, you need maybe two or three. And then we're going to put two or three more ES buttons or BC buttons in to then have various spotlights across the thermal and photo gradient of an enclosure. It's unrealistic. It's unrealistic. People won't do it. So we need to do give them the best option that they will use that they can use. The best option that we can use with a single stat, the best option that we can use with a single light source. And that's essentially the credo that I stick to. That you can provide 
good husbandry, maybe not the best husbandry, which after all is what these guys are going for. I can't argue with that. They, they, they're going for the advancement of herpetological husbandry, which is cool. You know, I've got no issue with that. I've got no beef with it. But, um, you know, I, I kind of reacted funny to the question as well. I expect, you know, there's, it's a funny place, this hobby, and you can give an answer to something and people uh, can run away with it, chop it up, use it for rebuttal videos, all this sort of shit. And who needs that, you know? Who needs that grief? I don't say what I say to try and wind or rile other people up. And I know that there's different ways to skin a cat. But I know that we've also got to sell these, these animals to people. And we've got to try and make it make sense. Uh, and we've got to do it at a price point that works. Bearing in mind that we're still in a climate where there's other shops and other dealers who will just sell any shit to anyone. And they don't care what equipment they have or don't have. So therefore, that is the other backdrop to this. So not only are we considerably more expensive because we offer the T5s and the thermostatic control, the digital units and all the rest of it, um, but then we could be almost double that value again because there's a second light controller, a second tube, another form of heating, maybe a secondary night thermostat. You know, come on. Just a dose of realism, really, more than anything else. I got no beef with it if people want to do it and if they've got sort of never ending bottomless pockets to do it with, cool. I don't advocate the use of heaters without thermostats. I don't think that's right. I think that we need to know what the temperature is and be able to control it. Ideally, particularly with animals that don't have a huge rate of attrition in an evening, they need to maintain some background heat. Now, the research has said that if you provide in UV light, Whereas previously, if we had a four foot viv, we'd put a 42 inch tube inside it and run it the whole length of the tank. Now they're saying that the photoregulatory properties of a vivarium should be similar to the thermoregulatory properties of a vivarium, meaning that you have a hot end and a cold end, so therefore we have a lit and a shaded end. Now, UVB, which is the, what we're trying to, is the big push, the next step to put it in with snakes, lizards, everything else, can only be absorbed via heat or turn into vitamin D3 proper via heat. So at which point, the photo uh, gradient and the thermal gradient have to be one and the same. The left is lit, the, the right is dark. The left is hot, the, the right is cool. You can't have them at opposing ends, it doesn't work. So at which point, the fact that a ceramic doesn't emit light is a non-issue. Because if they were photo regulating, they'd go up there and they'd also receive the heat at which point they have the heat receptors on their back and they know whether they're warming up or not. Um, if a heat pad is no good during the day, um, then why is it any good at night? It's what I don't get. It's like this weird double standard. Ceramics, yes, they do not heat in a directed way as well as a spot bulb. I'll agree with that. They are inefficient. They throw heat to the sides and around themselves. They don't necessarily force it directly down. But if we're dealing with tropical animals that have a more shallow gradient, that inefficiency is actually working to our benefit, where we warm the entirety of the viv and we create that shallow gradient. Whereas with our desert biome animals, these guys are trying to cane a basking spot up to 60 degrees Celsius and then hope to hell they can get the other end to cool down properly after superheating one single area, um, which is a different rig a different setup and therefore there is a nuanced argument to the way that we apply different heaters and different control systems to be able to make the vivariums run correctly um so the, the long and short of it is that you know it, the, the ceramic bulb can sit alongside a photo source the animal can bask in the case this was the false water cover we were talking about uh, equally uh, ceramics People argue dry out the air too quickly. Well, with an animal that's prone to fungal and bacterial infections, as with all semi-aquatic snakes, because people keep them in muggy, over-humid environments, something that dries out the air isn't necessarily a bad thing, especially when the snake's usually got somewhere to bask. And even if we were to keep it in the terrestrial setup as suggested in the video yesterday, just provide a localised moss box. Then the animal can go in there and get all the moisture it wants and then come back out again, which is similar to pretty much every other generic subtropical snake terrestrial rig that we would set up so i hope i hope that helps i mean like i said i've not made any any notes i'm just sort of rambling on but this is these are the the reasons why i would i made the the, the point i made 
without necessarily thinking about it as much as I've been forced to now by sitting down and going through it. But hopefully it's of use and it serves the purpose to the person who asked the question. And maybe it gives some insight to you guys the way that I think about things and the way that I consider the construction of enclosures. I'm sorry if it was a bit of a ramble and a bit random, but I'll only put this on YouTube. I won't put this on Facebook. We'll see you again soon. All the best, guys. Cheers.